We want to continue in our uh, study on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the helper, the standby, the paraclets, the alos paracletos, you know, the, the strengthener, the helper, the angel of his presence, this Holy Spirit that has all this. Hallelujah. And, I, and there's one scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Romans 8, 16, and then Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I love those scriptures so much. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with our regenerated human spirit. I just talk about man being spirit. This morning. So now the Holy Spirit is a new dimension now. The man is regenerated already. And now the Holy Spirit now, the Holy Spirit is the agent of salvation. The Holy Spirit is the vehicle of salvation. The Holy Spirit is that which makes salvation possible. It takes man into that realm of salvation. In fact, the Bible said that we cannot say Jesus Christ is Lord without the Spirit. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. So, so he said, the spirit itself now, bearing witness with us. So there is, a, there is a witness that the Holy Spirit bears with us. It is witness versus witness. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with our spirit. Our spirit is bearing witness that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, that we are the children of God. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, I love it so much. He said, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. So now you see now, you have weaknesses. Uh, it doesn't matter how powerful you want to prove to be. You still have what? Weaknesses. You still have weakness. You still have a weakness. That is why you need a witness. Hello? You catch that one? You have a weakness, so that's why you need what? A witness. And that's why the Holy Spirit is bearing witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. On so the last Sunday of this month, we are going to do some uh, practicals. It's practical Sunday. Hello. We want to do some practical. You know, we want, we want to generate the anointing. It's anointing service. We want to generate that anointing. We want to speak in tongues and pray in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps our weakness. For example, we do not, so, so he said, now, he helps our weak, weaknesses in many ways. Now, he said, for example, so he's bringing just one aspect where this, we need the Holy Spirit to help our witness. He said, concerning prayers. For example, we, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. Wait, 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 hold on there. We don't, I don't know what, I know what I want, but what I want may not be what God wants me to pray for. That's what we are getting from these scriptures now. So how can we do without the Holy Spirit? You can never do without the Holy Spirit. It is not possible, brothers and sisters. This is the spirit of life, my goodness. If you are watching me online, you are baptizing the Holy Ghost, you can just join us and blast in tongues. Because you need this. This is powerful. He said, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us. So he's a prayer warrior. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. He prays for us. Wow. And he does this with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are speaking in tongues, you are uttering words. Hello? But those words are spiritual words. Hello? And you know words are in syllables. So when you speak in tongues, you speak in tongues in syllables. Huh? <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Hallelujah. Amen. It's our strength now. I just love it. You know, Philippians said, Philippians 4.13, he said, I can do all things through Christ that what? That strengthens me. I can do all things. You can do all things. All. I can do all things. My first time of seeing this scripture, whoo, 
Woo! I was so excited. Because there were so many things that people told me growing up that I cannot do. So reading these scriptures is like it just sparked a fire inside of me. I said, man, I can do it. Uh, if other people can do it, then I can do it. If other people can do it, I can do it. When I read this scripture, and it dawned on me that I can do all things, I used to move with some kind of friends those days. I, these friends, they don't go to school. They were very, very bad guys. Are we listening now? Very, very bad guys. That's why every day I talk about association. I like to talk about association because your peers will determine the peer you eat. Hello? It is your peers that determines what? Your peer. Because if your peers are unripe, the pear you will eat will be unripe. And of course, it's going to be acidic. They will be going, it is school time. We will go towards the school. When we leave our house, we go towards the school dire direction. Now, we will all meet somewhere under one mango tree. <laughs> and then from there, we will navigate to a different, we will we'll go for hunting. We will go and start hunting for rabbits. Be careful. Be careful. Don't, the people you move with, eh? Hello? Somebody, do your two hands like this. Say, my God and my Father. My God and my Father. Surround me with champions. Surround me with champions. Surround me with people that have head. Surround me with people that have head. And are going good place. And are going good place. Now, you know, I didn't say surround me with people that have head that are going somewhere. Somewhere can be a bad somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is very, very important. Who we'll go start hunting for rabbits? And I don't know how to hunt for rabbits. But I will be following them. From the day we we'll, after hunting for rabbits, we we'll start going to Obey Stadium in Benin. We we'll go to stadium. What are we looking for? We were supposed to go to school, be in class, sit down and read. We were just gallivanting all over the town. At the end of that year, results don't lie. Results don't what? I was 45 out of 47. I even wonder how the two people I passed in that class, maybe they didn't show up in class all school year. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Maybe they didn't show up in class all school year. Oh, I was even... No, those two people, I need to look for them. <laughs> it is now that he's done in on me. That, ah, so I was even 45 position. Out of 47 in class. Then it dawned on me that I had missed it. I changed my association. I stopped moving with them. They called me names. I don't care. I am going... I want to become somebody in life. Call me name, mocked me, bullied me. I didn't care. Because at that point in time, I knew. My dad had told me, if you repeat that class, you are going to farm with my father. And I knew that I was not cut out for farming. Because even the way my grandfather farms, if you farm with him, you will die in the farm. The man doesn't get tired. He, ah. No, so I said, no, I'm not doing this. So, my grandma, of blessed memory, called me to her room and said, you follow me to church. I'll take you to go and meet the reverend. We call him reverend. It's not as if he was a reverend father. He goes reverend. So, because even myself, people think call me reverend, and some will call me father. And I accept it. Took me to the reverend, and then the reverend said, kneel down. I knelt down, and he prayed for me. And he said, be coming to church. So I started going to church. As a child, I didn't really know, but I was just going to church. I was in primary four. What is primary four here? Grade four. And then, I saw this scripture. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do 
all things. I read it again. I can do all things. Who? I, myself, I can do all things. And the first thing that came to my mind was that I want to be among the first three people in my class. I took first from behind before. Now I want to be among. I was the last three. I was the third to the last. Now I want to be the first three in my class. I began to read. I began to study. I was not missing classes. That year, I came out third. First year, third from the back. Second term, third from the back. But the last term, which is the third term, for that we decide the promotion. Because it's cumulative. It was all, all my effort that moved me from the back to the front was the effort I put in in the third term alone. Look at your neighbor say it is possible. You can be whatever you want to be by the help of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 it says and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord wow what else makes life beautiful if not these things if not these things. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 16. I want to read it and I'd like you to enjoy this read. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. If eyes have not seen it in verse 9, if it has not entered into the heart of man, if it has not even come to us, the things that God has prepared for us, then how can we assess it? Look at verse 10. He's showing us how to assess it. He said, but God has revealed them unto us by what? His spirit. Because the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So, it is the Holy Spirit that leads you into the mysteries of life. It is the Holy Spirit that helps you to assess the things that makes for success in life. Listen, whatever you seek, it is the Holy Spirit that will guide your path into that. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, I need you. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Holy Spirit, reveal things to me. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Holy Spirit, lead me into the deep things of life. Holy Spirit, lead me into the deep things of God. Show me the path of life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Open your eyes, look at me. Do you know Holy Spirit can teach you? Because he's a teacher. He can teach you how to play drums. Hello, do you know the Holy Spirit can teach you something? How to play the piano. That everybody, it will take them only two years to learn. It will take you only two months. And before you know it, you are there, you are playing it. Do you know that the Holy Spirit can teach you how to play drum? He can teach you how to operate systems. He can teach you things. He can, he can guide you into all truth. The truth about how to operate computer. 
that it will take so many people years. But when it comes to you, Holy Spirit will just make it easy for you. You will just understand it. And before you know it, you are now, your, your boss is even, has even trust you with the thing more than the others that have been there before you. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Look at verse 11 of that scripture. For what man knoweth the things of a man? I'm going, to, I'm going to blow your mind now. Look at something here. Save the spirit of man which is a man. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man except the spirit of God. What are you looking for? What am I looking for? About God, in God, about yourself, in man. He said the spirit of God We enter inside. He knows everything. So Holy Spirit knows everything. Hmm. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Holy Spirit can be a doctor. Of course, he's greater than your doctor. The Holy Spirit can be your counselor because he's a counselor. Ah. The Holy Spirit can be your instructor. How you get what I'm saying? I know of one of my in-laws, my sister-in-law. She didn't learn driving. Hello. She didn't learn driving. My wife had sister. She didn't learn driving. She just entered into the car, bought a car, entered into the car, started driving. Huh? <laughs> started driving. Who taught you how to play make hair? He just there. He just came. Are we together here? The Holy Spirit. He takes you on that journey. He becomes your GPS for life. He helps you to navigate and tells you go to that office. Enter there now. That thing will work for you now. The Holy Spirit. Engage him. Oh my goodness. Engage him. If I'm talking to you, say amen. Amen. Engage him. Oh. Engage the Holy Spirit. Ah my goodness. Engage the Holy Spirit. If you can engage the Holy Spirit as a young guy, your life will change forever. What your teachers don't know, he will tell you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What your peers and people around you don't know. Do you know you can be the center of attraction? Yes, by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can tell you, wake up this time. This is the time to wake up and practice. And by the time you are practicing, you are practicing, you're, you're, you're athletic, you are practicing and you are practicing, you discover that you are even getting more stronger that period than when you after you have eaten pandayam and now you are going to gym. The Holy Spirit know how to do things. He know how to guide you into all these things. Please, what I'm sharing with you this morning will save you a lot of heartache. He, gives, he, he guides you to, on how to get a wife. He guides you on how to get a husband. He shows you the path. When you make mistakes in your choice, listen to me, do you know that we, are, we can make mistakes? Let's agree. We can make mistakes. The Holy Spirit is, what, is the personality that will help you to cushion the effect of your mistakes. I don't know whether you get what I just said. Because the, when, there are some mistakes that can be very fatal. It can be very, very disastrous. Are we together, sir? Some mistakes can be really bad. For example, somebody made a mistake to get married. I mean, to enter into a wrong marriage. And then he marries that wrong person and the person is giving him hell. Now, it's the only thing that will help you to handle and manage that situation. It gives you the wisdom because it's the spirit of wisdom. It gives you the understanding because it's the spirit of understanding. He gives you the spirit not to divorce because it's the spirit of the fear of God. And then, he can also give you the spirit to say, it's time to stay away and let wisdom rule now. Let wisdom take over now. So, he knows how to navigate systems and issues in life. The Holy Spirit. That you are lying down, you are very, you are filming, you are very angry. Very angry and the Holy Spirit tells you that it's for your good. Ah. How can this be for my good? It's for your good. Praise the Lord somebody. I can't take this anymore. Do you know some people when they hit their leg on the ground like this, it means that it's all finished. They are done. I can't take this anymore. Sometimes you are even shedding tears. Why am I going through? Why is this person doing this to me? And God said, it's for your good. I'm with you right here. I am your standby. I'm with you. Let's go. Lord, I don't understand. I don't know. He said, that's why I'm here. I'm here by your side. I'm your what? Somebody say stand by. I'm here. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, cool down, bro. Guy, 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 guy. Cool down. Guy, do what? It's for your. 
I know of one of my friends. I want to make you laugh a little bit. This my friend said to me so many years ago, he's in the UK now. He said he wanted to learn how to play the guitar. And well, uh, I was in my house. One day he came. He was fuming badly. He was like, I said, how is the piano lesson? How is the, the guitar lesson going? He said, I'm not doing anymore. I said, what happened? He said, every time, he said he fought with the instructor. Ah, what kind of fight? He said, real fight. Oh, you were exchanging places, yes. <laughs> with your instructor. Ah, <laughs> you, till today, he doesn't know how to play. You can't play because you are a fighter. Guitarists don't fight. They play. Fighters, <laughs> you people are laughing. <laughs> Fighters go to the ring. They fight, they box. But guitarists, they do what? They play. So it, anything you fight over, you never learn. I don't know whether you are getting what I'm talking about. Anything you, you fight over, <clears throat> you never learn it. You will never learn it. So I said, so what really happened? Tell me. Myself and my other bro, Christian brother were there. Uh, Pastor Davidson. They were there. I said, ah, what really happened? And then he said, every time he will push my hand, he will press my hand to the string. <laughs> and you know, it was not bass guitar. It was lead. And lead has tiny strings. Am I correct, sir? Lead, lead guitar has tiny strings. And at some point, you will think that they are going to pierce into your, your skin. He said, he's already, he, he has told him before that it's very painful. He said, he was telling, he's not hearing, is this sounding your ear? Is this sounding? I need to hear the right sound, the right sound. Press it, let the sound come out. He will press it. And on that fateful day, he pressed his hand, he couldn't take the pain again. He, he just... <laughs> <laughs> he just flared up and threw the guitar away and said, I'm not doing anymore. They started fighting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Till today, he hasn't learned it. He doesn't know how to play because he was not ready to give himself to what? To the teacher. To the what? To the what? To the instructor. The teacher. Sometimes situations come to teach you. When you keep running away from them, you never learn the way out of them. You didn't get me. Are you catching something this morning? Is this Sunday blessing you? When you give yourself to the situation, you will learn the way out of it. So you can become a resource to other people. You can begin to advise other people and counsel them on the best way to handle those situations. But whenever you see the situation and you run away from the situation, you never learn it. You never conquer it. Learn to conquer your Goliath. Don't run away from them. Don't run away from them. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we go, go on verse 12? Verse 12. Now we have received the spirit of... We have received... Not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God. My goodness. The spirit which is of God. Hallelujah. The spirit which is of God. The spirit which is of God. That's what we received. We have received the spirit which is of God. You didn't get it. When you get it, I will know. The spirit we receive is the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us. So they are freely given, but if you don't know it, you cannot assess it. You see it now? Yes, sir. You see how it works now, sir? So if you, you... Okay, I'll give you another story. Humorous also. The first time I entered into the aeroplane, I came down from the aeroplane very hungry. I boarded an aircraft... <laughs> from Lagos, Nigeria, to Joss, Plateau State, where I was doing my master's program. And then, I think it was, it was uh, uh, one of my senior editor, I, I know it was my senior editor that bought that ticket for me. Within Nigeria, Arik Air. <laughs> now, by the time I got to my hostel, 
I was famished. Very, very hungry. And so my friend asked me, why will you, why are you this hungry? Did you not eat in the plane? I said, they served food, but I didn't take it because I don't have money to pay. I'm a student. You guys are not laughing. Ah, Jesus of Nazareth. My friend, look at me. This is a man doing master's degree. He's still very primitive like this. He doesn't know that both that when you pay food and everything there is included in that, in that bill. And then he began to explain to me. I felt like going back into the plane. So that so that I will eat all the food I didn't eat. Because people were eating jollof rice, were eating chicken, I'm like. I said, I can't, no, I, I don't have, they, they asked me, you, what do you want? I said, no, nothing. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ. Ignorance is a disease, oh. Ah, ignorance is not good. Look at what he's saying here. He said, there are things that are freely given to us, but we cannot know it. We cannot assess it without the Holy Spirit. Wow. Please. I don't want you to get to heaven and God begin to show you that this was something that you're supposed to have enjoyed, you didn't enjoy it. This is another thing you're supposed to have enjoyed, but you didn't enjoy it. God, who owns that, that ride, that car? Who owns that blessing? Who owns that? Who owns, ah, these are for you. We were waiting for you to take delivery of them, but you did not. Ah. Can I go back? He said it's too late. <laughs> Lift up your two hands. Say, I take delivery of everything that God has freely given to me by the Holy Spirit. I assess and I take delivery of all that the Lord has given to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 13. He said, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I love this. Oh, that is a dimension, it's another dimension of his own. So you can't walk in deception if you have the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Look at verse 14. He said, but the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. You know, the problem we have, sir, 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 man, the problem we have here is this. Because of the human nature, because of the flesh and what man uh, encountered at the fall, God is saying that that man cannot assess spiritual death, cannot assess spiritual life. Cannot assess the things that God has brought to us. That the only way man can assess it is by the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because the things I'm talking about now, there are some people if they sit down here now, they will be so they will, they will not understand, they will not get it. You know why you are able to grab what I'm talking about? Because you have a regenerated human spirit. The Holy Spirit is already brooding on your spirit, and now is you know many of us. We are at a state where the spirit, our spirit, is colonizing our soul. Hello, sir. That is where we are. That is where most people are. The flesh still want to talk sometimes. The body still want to talk sometimes. But the more you give your spirit control, the more your soul is won over to the side of the spirit. And then... The body begin to say, the body begin to lose control, and the body say, "Well, I don't want to be alone. I have to join them." So the body is now being wooed over by the spirit and the soul. The scripture is saying here that the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them, because they can only be spiritually discerned. You can only discern them spiritually. You can only assess them spiritually by the Holy Spirit. This is very, very important. I hope I'm not talking over your head. This is very, very important. In your room, 
when I was like my son, I don't have, I don't have a space not to talk of my room. But now he has his own room. You know what I mean by space? There's no. Many of you have spaces in your room. When we were growing up, you have space. No. Sometimes it is if you when you come, come and they are sleeping and every, your siblings are sleeping, one face here, the other one face there, the other one face there, leg is on top of this one's head and hand is on top of the other one's neck. And then, so you just look for your space. You look for a corner and sleep. Are you getting my point here? You just put yourself in one corner and sleep. But he has his own room now. Now, listen, let me tell you something. If you have access to your own space, please, encounter the Holy Spirit. Pray. How do you encounter the Holy Spirit? Just pray. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you. He all, listen, all the Holy Spirit wants from you is sincerity of heart. If you are really sincere, Holy Spirit, I need you. Pastor, I've talked about you. My daddy has talked about you. My uncle has talked about you. Mommy has been talking about Holy Spirit. Now, let's get into business. Let's be serious. I need you. If you kneel down, Lie down on the floor, not on the bed. Bed itself sometimes can be too much comfort. Don't mind me, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a caveman. God has brushed me up. Praise the Lord, somebody. They are only spiritually designed. Look at verse 15. Please look at verse 15. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at verse 15. He said, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. You see? Yet he himself is not judge of no man. He, he, just, he knows. For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Hey, this is powerful. So, why the Holy Spirit, why your spirit is regenerated, there is an impartation that is going on. Your soul is being colonized by the word of God, it creates in you a new mind. Creating me a new heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Powerful, powerful. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 20 to 27. I'm rounding up now. First John 2, verse 20 to 27. Are you together with me? Are you together? Are you looking at your Bible? Very powerful. Look at this. From verse 20. Of 1 John chapter 2. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things. Hello, hold it there. You have an, an unction from the Holy One. You have an anointing from the Holy One. You have the Spirit of God upon your life. You say, and you know all things. Is it true that you know all things? The truth is this. You can never accept something you don't believe. That's, what the, that, that's the bubble I just put place most of you now. I said something, I read it from the Bible. And now I ask you, do you know all things? And the first thing that came to your mind, look up. No, I don't know all things. Because you have been colonizing your mind. Some part of your mind is it telling you, no, 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 no. You don't know all things. Uh -uh. Do you know all Are you God? Are you God? You don't know all things. But the word of God is saying this. That there is an unction from the Holy One. There is an ability that draws from God, that comes from God. By the Spirit of God, he says, you know all things. Now, let's break, break it down. Verse 21. He said, I, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth. Which truth is he talking about now? The truth. Christ says, I am the truth. And Jesus said, thy word is truth. He said, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Look at verse 22. Look at verse 22. He said, Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Verse 23 now. Whosoever denied the Son, the same had not the Father. He that acknowledged the Son had the Father also. And the last verse here now. Let that, let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If, if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, take note, it is if, 
if that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he had promised us, even eternal life. You see, the Holy Spirit brings all this package to you. He said, these things, verse 26, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing, thank you, Holy Ghost. But the anointing, verse 27 now, but the anointing which you have received of him abided it in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. My goodness. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and it's truth, and it's no lie, and even as it had taught us, ye shall abide in him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he's telling, he's bringing all the dimensions of the Holy Spirit here. He came from the Father, and he's telling you that you is your teacher. He will teach you all things. It doesn't matter the things that are seducing you around in the world, in your environment. He said the more you abide, the more you stay with the Holy Spirit, the more you allow the Holy Spirit to keep working in your life. The more, the more you engage him, he said, the more you gain mastery over the things of life. Praise the Lord, somebody. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. How be it? John 16, verse 13. How be it? John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Wow. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. There are some times, let's face it, there are some times ju I'm just confused about some issues. Are we together here? Yes, sir. That sometimes I'm just confused about some issues. You know what I do? Can I give you a secret? I will just start speaking in tongues. That's why I tell somebody, you must receive that baptism. And we are going to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit on people. Last Sunday of this month, I want to hear you speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh yes, I want to hear you speak in tongues. I, I, you, I don't take you to school to learn how to speak in tongues. There is an unction from the Holy One. It comes on you, and when it comes on you, the utterance begins to flow. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Anytime I'm just confused like that, in that, in that, when I'm confused, is that I don't really know how, what to, the, the, the side to take in this, in a particular matter. I just start speaking in tongues. Masha Holy Spirit, my standby. What do I do? Angels of God, speak. Marato, Skelia, Zeka, Baba, Bayada. Ezo, Kali, Mayada. Just praying in tongues. Just praying in the Holy Ghost. And it, it opens up a door for me in the spirit realm. Are we together here now? It opened up a door. Somebody asked me, he said, Apostle, why is it? It is not, you are, it's very easy for you to accept an uh, idea. I said, well, it's not hard for me to accept an idea, especially when I, that, when I know what I'm doing. When that idea aligns with the vision that God has given to me. Or when that idea... Now, let me tell you something. You can... Let's give an example now. Let's assume our sister come to me and share with me. I say, sir, I want to decorate this altar. I want to make a, a, a backdrop here and make it very fine. Look, the Holy Spirit is already in me. And the Holy Spirit is in her. And the Spirit will begin to bear witness with themselves. Say it is time. I'll say, well, it's okay. Let's go ahead. Let's do it. Do you know that there is a design, a decoration that you will put right on this altar? If she sees it, her spirit will not agree with it. If I see it, also, mm, this is not what we want. 
You know why? Because, because the Holy Ghost is in her and the Holy Spirit is in me, we see the same thing. We see the same thing in the spirit realm. That is what we call confirmation. Sometimes she will, she will call me and tell me something. And then I will say, she, and you remember? Sometimes she will say, yes. I said it. That was exactly what the Holy Spirit was telling me. I said, wow. Holy Spirit don't contradict itself. Are we together here now? He doesn't contradict itself. 